Hey YouTube and welcome to yet another solar based video I guess. Um, I have some computers that I wanted to set up and I wanted to run them directly off the solar system without having to go through the inverter and everything and, and I was playing around and I couldn't find too many guides on this so I figured to present my findings. And for this I will be using one of these meters uh, that will just show me the input voltage and the output voltage and uh, the power consumptions so that we can see how much this system uses. I don't have a comparison between this setup and what it would use if I had to first invert it to 230 volts and then back into whatever DC voltage the computer needs. But I do think that this is probably more efficient. Um, but yeah, I have no numbers on that one. So first I have um, here, I have my plug from the solar. And I'll just plug this one in to this little thing. Um, it's not needed for the part of the system. But this will give some good numbers so we can see uh, what's going on. Then I got some of these, uh, let's see, like these um, power converters and I've adjusted this one to 5 volts and I have a couple of more that has like different voltages on them. This is 12 volts, a bit hard to read. And then I also have one that is 9 volts over on the, over on the side here. And um, right now this unit is off, but it has... Um, it's set to just use a maximum of what I get in, um, which is 24 volts at the moment, and then it just passes 24 volts into these things. And they will do the regulation, so uh, I could have bypassed this one, but this one gives me so nice numbers, so it's nice to, to have it there so that we can check. And uh, yeah, I also have, whoops, uh, one of these things which uh, produces USB power and both this one and this one can take an input voltage they say up to 55 volts but um, the solar sometimes it produces up to 58 I guess 59 maybe when it's on full um, full charging and they have worked fine so far with those high voltages and they can also go down really low like they can have an input voltage of 9 volts without a problem so this setup should work for a 12 volt 24 or 48 volt system just fine as far as I have seen so yeah let's turn this one on we can see now the input voltage now the out output uh, voltage is 23 volts the input is there 24 and it's as high as I can make it um, and it uses when all of these ones are now connected it uses um, 13 watts of power so not so much on standby this one uses a little bit more on standby uh, let's connect that one first just so we have some numbers for it and this one also just connects directly from one of the wires from this one. Which I have a little bit off screen here. So I'll just plug that one back in. And then we see the wattage uses a little bit more. I'll leave this one up here off screen for now. And for a monitor, I have uh, one of these that's just run out of USB power. And uh, I'm not sure how, like there is so many numbers in the end here for if I plug in this monitor to USB. Then you see the voltage usage go up a little bit. And um, I'm not sure if this would be a good monitor for your setup. So uh, we can probably reduce this by a little bit, depending on 
if you want a monitor, if you want a bigger monitor, then it will use more power and you can get DC powered monitors as well. So monitors of the scope for the power consumption of, uh, of this video, unless you want a very simple setup like this. And uh, I do have some uh, computers that I want to try. One of them is this uh, Tinkerboard thing. It's a 32-bit system, but it's um, it's nice. I like it, and I have this one little USB dongle here for a keyboard. You can connect later, and then I also have um, two of these. Uh, what are they called? Old droids. Um, they're uh, the same computer, but one with and one without the fan. These are really powerful, nice 64-bit computers with USB 3 and and all you need. And there are so many guides on these, so that's not the point of this video. The point is how to make them work on a solar system. And then lastly, I also have one of these um, ASRock B-Box systems just to have that one tried as well. Oh, sticker is falling off there. So yeah, oh, and and uh, this also, which is um, the same Tinkerboard, just that it's connected to a monitor. Yeah, let's uh, look at some of these and how they, how they work. Um, first of all, we need internet to do these things, and I like powered internet, so I will be using one of these uh, switch um, and I'll connect this one first. This one goes through the, the little 9 volt I have here because it has a 9 volt uh, 9 volt input and you uh, can just connect that one first so we get the base power setup and just a normal plug and um, plug that one in and then you can see it starts up like normal, just as it had wall power. But now we use almost nothing from the solar and we don't need to converge the power much. And I'll connect that one to the internet so that we have network available. So that one is now running off solar and the monitor is running off solar. If I now turn the monitor off so we can see uh, more now we can see it uses about two watts of power and that's the the power supplies and and um, and the switch running okay so which one should we do first we can start with this tinkerboard here and um, what I done for for the Tinkerboard setup, it this also works for Raspberry Pi and all these kind of computers, but they only have the power from USB. And I don't want to power them from this USB. I want to use this converter here. So I have a wire from that one that I have two different connections on. Let's see if I can get the wire out without destroying everything. Sorry about the bad noises probably um, and on this one I have two different connection one normal that I can put into the Odroid and this one that I made that I can connect to directly to the GPIO pins and also it has a, a little connector on the side there that I can use for a setup like this where it also needs a connection into the to the monitor power up, up there well, we'll look into that one soon. So, I just uh, find a HDMI cable so that I can connect the monitor. Let's see, I should have had that one ready, of course. Um, so, here is a HDMI cable. I'll just connect that one to the input of this monitor. And then over and into this 
Tinkerboard. And we can also connect in internet with just plugging a wire into the switch. And then there's a lot of wires. <coughs> Sorry about the mess. Um, let's connect it like that. And a keyboard dongle so that I can have a keyboard to the system. And then let's see. Trying to make not too much noise here for the camera, but it's not so easy with the wires. Um, yeah, and then it's just to I'll, I'll turn it off first so that everything is off while I plug power onto this one because I have no individual power switch for this this uh, computer, but I can use this one for now. Then I turn it on and should come uh, these are a little bit slow to start up but it should come a picture on the monitor fairly soon there and the computer is booting up directly on solar power without being inverted to 230 volts first and one good thing about this is some of these ones uses quite a bit of amperage so you have to have special USB converters and stuff. These ones are powerful enough to provide the amperage needed by all the single board computers that I've tested. Even multiple. Yeah, you can connect this one to multiple of these and they still run just fine and they don't get too warm either. But yeah, the computer booted up and I guess it's just to turn it back off again. So I have a keyboard here and I'll just um, go in here and then log out and shut down. It should shut down nicely. So that was a single board computer that uses the GPIO pins for power. Works great with a solar setup. So let's disconnect all this stuff again. And then I yeah, can turn this one off. And then we can look into one different type, which are the the Odroids. Um, this one is fanless, so it's really nice and quiet. And this one has a fan. I'll use the one with a fan for this example. And uh, just connect in power, and then. Uh, internet, we don't even need the internet. Um, and then this one has then another type of plug which I showed earlier, which is this type, which fits into the Odroid setup over here, like that. Um, and then we can turn it back on. And it uses a little bit more power, but it's not bad. I had a Raspberry Pi running all winter. I mean, barely have any charge here all winter, and it was running fine for three months without solar on the batteries. So it's a good, good way to to have them running for a long period of time without draining the batteries too much. Just the inverter itself use to be on uses more power than uh, multiple of these together. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, and this one booted nice into its operating system and on, on standby the fan isn't even running. I guess I shouldn't turn the fan manually. It can produce like it will work like a generator and generate a little bit of power if you turn it and that will then feed back into the computer and may harm it. So we'll just connect the keyboard again and then Turn this one here go into the menu and then oh yeah this one I don't know how to shut off actually from the keyboard but this one has a power button so I can just press the power button and it should start to shut down so that was um, this old road computer and then 
can look into a computer like this um, this B box which is a more more powerful computer I guess I'm not sure actually but it has a 12 volts input and uh, I have a 12 volt transformer up on top here with a wire on as well so this one also connected through the same system um, now we can turn this one on up front because this one has a power button and uh, and yeah it's just to connect the power to this computer and then the power button is up here you can just turn it on try to turn it on it's not always so easy there and yeah, you see the picture on the monitor and it will start to I guess I need I don't have an operating system on that one so I do need to have an operating system let's just plug one in the USB port up front and then turn it off and on again let's try again I can connect the keyboard while we wait for this one to start up which I have in the other computer still and then plug that one in there because it asked me to press 1 to continue for some time. It should start to boot up now. It was, um, Sorry about that. I got a phone call in the middle of the video, um, but this one is um, it's stuck on booting because it requires internet with the setup I have on it now, and it doesn't have a, a nice UI to show anyways. But you'll still see that it it boots and and things work. So I'll I'll just turn this one off again. And, um, it's nothing really. Um, valuable on this computer anyway, so I'll, I'll just force it off and then we can continue with the setting up the, um, the last computer and see if that one works as well or how that one works and that one is uh, 5 volts, so we can remove the 12 volt plug and the last one has a built-in monitor um, so it's a uh, monitor shield on the on the background and the um, whatever this computer was called again up front so I'll just connect in the power cable first on the monitor in the back like that and then the computer as well like that and then I have one wire for both of them Let's see, I can put that one there hopefully, and then to just turn it on. Now we don't need power for the other monitor, so unplug that one, so the power consumption goes down a little bit. Yeah, and this one boots nicely as well, and uh, if you want this system to to last a long time, you can also have a screensaver on that will turn the screen off and and save a lot of lot of power by not having the the monitor on. And remember this one is now also giving power to the the network and, and other things so the power consumption shouldn't be this high if you just leave it running um, with a with a screensaver on. So yeah that was my little attempt on playing around with computers powered directly from from DC power on the solar uh, without being inverted. I hope you like it.